Hi, Chief. Um, I would also like to add that insurance companies cannot will offer discounts usually for some of these um, security alarms, especially if it's a central station. Um, and also, we at State Farm have field underwriters that will go out into the field and meet with business owners to kind of look over the business to see um, if there are any safety issues that may be addressed. So just as an additional resource, I know you guys are, are busy trying to keep our streets safe, but uh, your insurance company may offer discounts and additional resources. And you've always uh, had a, a great uh, relationship with our department, so we thank you for that. Yes, sir. Bertie Bach, I'm with the uh, University of New Mexico, and you know that we're way out there on the south side of town. Uh, and we've also seen a moderate upswing in some crimes that we've seen on our campus. Uh, some of the things that we've been seeing are sort of uh, gang-related, uh, what kind of things are you guys doing here in the town of Taos to try to prevent some of that gang activity? Some of the things that we've done is, is we, have, we now have two school resource officers that are involved in the schools full time. We've got one at the uh, high school and one at the middle school now. And most of that is meant to deal with uh, gang activity, gang suppression. Um, and drugs that had been coming into the schools. Since this, this was the first school year that we, that we had an officer full-time at the middle school, uh, but between all of those officers, between those two officers, they've also covered the uh, uh, charter schools, and we've also helped out with Rancho schools and Arroyo Seco and schools that aren't in our jurisdiction, but we'll still help them out with with those types of services. But, you know, we're, we're trying to establish that positive relationship with students at a younger age to, uh, to minimize some of the recruiting that's going on in the schools. Because I, I want children to have a positive relationship with us so that their first, their first encounter with police isn't when they're being pulled over once they get their driver's license or or when we respond to their house for a, a domestic violence situation. You know, we want them to, to grow with us, to, uh, to, to know that we're, we're human and we actually mean the best for them. We're, we're not uh, just ticket riding robots out there that lock people up, you know. We, we won't want to have that relationship. But we also began, uh, or, or reinvigorated our, our gang task force to also educate other officers and other agencies as to who the gang members are. Because that's, that's still, uh, there's still a lot of officers that really don't know a whole lot about our gang situation here. Uh, in Taos, it's estimated we have over 300 gang members, several different gangs that, uh, uh, you really don't, you don't see a whole lot of uh, gang on gang activity, uh, or at least we haven't here within the town. Although you've, you've heard of some of the uh, homicides of the young kids out in the county area, but that's really been supposed friends against friends uh, killing each other. But we're, we're I think we're getting a, a better grasp on it. I'm trying to reach out to some of the gang members to try to come to the table and uh, and you know see what, if we can resolve some of the issues and, and just start that dialogue that, that hasn't been done before. So you know that's that's one of the visions that I'm looking at. You know, thinking way forward. But you know, our mission to have the school resource officers is to stop chasing the tail because we're never going to catch it. So we have to reverse and, and start, hitting <clears throat> start hitting things head on and, uh, and try to reach out to those future leaders. I hope that answered your question. But uh, we're, we're uh, actively involved in, in that. Anybody else? Excuse me. The, uh, when we have our 
properties on, on the plaza. It's um, generally, I, I mean, we've over the 10 years, we've hardly ever had an incident. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact that there is a presence there. Um, is there, uh, I, I noticed that not as much bicycle policing as there had been in the past. Is that something that's, that's going to continue? Uh, is that something that you look for doing uh, again this summer? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we do want to beef up our bicycle officers. Some of them have, uh, are, are no longer interested in riding the bikes, but we do have some younger officers that, that want to take part. Uh, you know, we've, we've got some bikes that, uh, that need work. So we're, uh, you know, we, we've got to work on our bikes as well to get them, get them ready. But, uh, we, I know the, the lieutenants spent quite a bit of time in the plaza, uh, kind of in a, uh, well, plain clothes. So he's there, although people may not know he's there, but he's been there at most of the shows. But we do want to beef up our, our bike team. And as it warms up, you'll, you'll see more of them out, out there. I think uh, this weekend at the Mother's Day event, there'll be some of our people, there'll be state police on their bikes helping us out as well. In the historic district, that interaction with our with our visitors and you know for acting as ambassadors also but if the if the officers are in a car it's it's hard to interact but when they're out on a bicycle or or walking for that matter it just is that much more uh, of a presence and and i think a, a certain feeling of security for the business owners and the visitors alike and I wish personally that, that I could do it a lot more, but we're involved so much in, in every aspect of the community and the schools that, that we're, uh, we're spread pretty thin right now. But uh, we've, we've got three officers in the hopper that, are, uh, that we're, we're trying to get hired to uh, beef up our numbers, so we're, we're getting there. during the summer, right? That's right. Yeah, especially during the summer. He's one of our school resource officers. So, like the lieutenant said, thanks for reminding me. Um, he, that will be his, his patrol on the bike. You were mentioning three officers in the hopper. Where, where are you staff-wise as far as where, where you would like to be? And where you are now? Well, I could easily use it. Well, I could easily use double what I have now. But uh, there's 20 of us right now, which includes the lieutenant and I. Uh, so um, with uh, with three more, that that will be 23. Our authorized strength is 24. But uh, I could, like I said, I could easily double that because our our calls for service. From 2009 to 2010, um, increased by 85 percent. So that's that's huge. Also, so you can see why I could easily use double what I have. Yes, ma'am. I'm wondering how you're going to get more. Is there a request in the new town budget, which starts right in July, to? have more than 24 authorized? In short, I, I had requested 10 more. Um, we were, I think back then we were probably in, in the same position that we're at, about three or four short. Uh, we're, we're, I'm always requesting more money. <laughs> give me more, give me more. But uh, I understand the towns, the town has to balance between us and the other agencies but what i try to get them to realize is that you know although it's great to have all these other amenities you simply can't do without public safety public safety has to be a town's priority you know businesses aren't going to want to move here if it's an unsafe place so uh, you know we're, we're always trying to 
trying to solicit more for our department. In fact, uh, it was uh, an idea of mine to raise the, uh, the quarter cent sales tax, but specifically for public safety, not for all these other all these other things, but just for public safety, for police and fire, because our work is, is very expensive. Uh, but as, as we could see during the, the gas outage, uh, sorry to bring that up, John, but, uh, <coughs> um, you know, other, other town uh, properties had to close. But, I mean, you, you can't do without police and fire and, and emergency responders, EMS people. Uh, that's that's priority. I mean, we're, that's why they call it the thin blue line. It's the very thin blue line between anarchy and chaos and uh, a stable society. And and we're it. You know, uh, any time I get criticism or that I've had criticism through my career of oh, police this, police that, I try to get people to realize what life would really be like without police officers, you know, even for a day and then a week and a month, you know, think of what that chaos would be like. But uh, uh, as long as, as we're here, we're always, uh, we're always at town hall and, and dealing with the mayor and, and council trying to get more staff and better pay. Uh, we're, we're still at uh, like 2001 pay wages. We're, we're in the lowest 10 percentile in the uh, in the country. So <clears throat> we're always uh, in a struggle to keep the officers that we have and keep them from moving to Rio Rancho or Santa Fe or or another agency. So it's a constant struggle that we're gonna we're gonna face unless you know our unless police here are viewed as a priority. So it's a constant battle that, that I fight. In the paper saying the police department was fully staffed and didn't need any more people. And I'm wondering how do we have this disconnect between either the town told them that or the paper got that information someplace else. But um, we, the business people in downtown, are very much affected by the lack of law and order. We have gangs coming through. We have our businesses get tagged. I have people on my roofs at night all the time um, doing drugs and whatever, marking up the roofs and putting holes in them. I mean, we really need safety. And I'm just wondering, there's a new budget coming up, and how can we, the business community, help you get the word to the ta taxpayers and to the town government and to the newspaper that safety is a priority for us and we would really like them to make it a higher priority. How can we help you? Just by, by holding your, your mayor and council and manager and us accountable, you know, just by, by showing up at the council meetings and, and asking those same questions. Uh, because I heard that quite a bit on on radio and and in the media that you know we're fully staffed and I, I kept saying no we're not <laughs> <laughs> so it you know we we've we've gotten in some some hot water ourselves because we we don't remain quiet and uh, um, we're not going to but just holding people accountable and, and demanding that public safety be a priority. So because we realize that we're never going to have the manpower that we want, that's, that's why we're reaching out here and, and amongst the neighborhoods and through the social media to, to get not only get that support and understanding, but, but to, to share that responsibility that it's going to take the whole community to be safe. Any 
Uh, I'd like the lieutenant to come and uh, give a, uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, the other directions that we're taking in the business community. Well, mine's really based on a class that's just attended basically uh, hotels and motels. Um, I took a class at the Albuquerque Police Department. They're in partnership with the hotels and motels. And basically what it is is an addiction of crime because uh, even if you're a five-star hotel and you don't think it's happening in your hotel, it's happening in your hotel. People are going there because they made stole from the other business and made enough money or sold enough drugs to, to treat themselves to a nicer place. So uh, just like we like to go to a nicer place. So if you don't think uh, they're smoking crack in your hotel or doing uh, crime and using your hotel as a cover, they are, or selling out of your hotel. So basically what it is is a, a, a partnership that would trust and they, they train the hotel staff and the motel staff what to look out for. Um, it really helps us out, helps them out, and uh, they work uh, collaboratively and uh, with mutual trust. And um, you would believe, wouldn't believe what they get out of the hotel and people are staying there. And when I said, I don't care if it's a five-star, $5,000 suite. You know, it's, uh, they, uh, they get a lot of crime out of there, and, um, and it has to work mutually just like the businesses have to work mutually. They also use, uh, like the chief said, um, it's uh, basically an internet service that you can sign up for. Uh, if you have a shoplifting, you post a picture, it goes out to all the businesses, hotels, and this person might recognize the person because they arrested them before and they're still looking for this guy over here, and they contacted the detective, and it goes out statewide because just because a criminal does not in Albuquerque doesn't mean he doesn't come up here and uh, I know Chief didn't mention we just arrested a guy out of Colorado who was a big time crook who was working his way into New Mexico and heading south. So you probably read that in the paper. So it does happen here in Taos. And I'm sure we get a lot of people passing through that stay in the hotels and it affects everybody when they're doing credit card fraud, white collar crimes, affects the business, affects the insurance companies, people are filing claims because they get ripped off. So that's basically what it is. And, and we're going to get another detectable board in here which uh, the town would understand that, I mean, we can have officers and we can take reports all day long, never solve a crime, uh, because them guys are too busy going to call the calls, they don't understand what a detective does. It's time consuming, it's gathering data, gathering information, looking at surveillance video, interviewing people, uh, uh, surveillance, I helped on that case. We sat out a business for three hours waiting for this guy. So that's something my patrolmen don't have time to do because they're too busy answering calls. Those the chiefs that calls for services up, so they're getting hammered. So uh, that's basically what it is. And once uh, I get my detective aboard, I'm going to get him trained. And uh, we're going to reach out to the uh, I Wish I Had Hotel and, and Motel people here, but reaching out with them on, on something like that. So hopefully make a dent. Thank you. All right, any other questions for either the lieutenant or the chief? All right, well, I think they deserve a big hand. Thank you for joining us today. We will be back again uh, the first Friday of June. And don't know what the program is going to be yet, but uh, we will make sure it will be good, whatever it is. So thank you, Leslie. Always, always great to have a cheerleader. <laughs> Um, I appreciate all of you being here. Hopefully you'll all stay engaged with the, with the Taos County Chamber of Commerce and, and su uh, certainly support our Town of Taos Police Department because I think they're doing a great job. So thanks once again for being here and want to also th especially thank the staff of the Hotel Don Fernando de Taos for the great work that they do. So thanks again everybody.